Hello, Hello America. America. In recent, in recent weeks, weeks, we've heard a lot about dams in California. California. As one, As one of the largest states in the Union, it may not, it may not surprise, surprise you that the Golden State, State has dozens of dams and thousands of, thousands of cities and farms running up its hundreds of miles, from, from Oregon, Oregon to Mexico. To best, to best explain these, these dams and the history of water in California, we took a broad, we took a broad view, view of the entire region, from the general, from the general, to, the general to the specific. We researched, we researched the interested parties and their involvement until we discovered the crux of water management in the region. Shasta Dam. Dam. John Sutter began settling the Sacramento River Valley in 1839. The gold rush and military buildup of World War II expanded and populated the region to unprecedented levels. All this for a land once deemed uninhabitable by Spanish and Russian explorers. The first, the first investigation, investigation of California's water resources began in 1873. The Central Valley, in, Cal in Cal California's main agricultural region, remained prone to flooding and drought for decades. By 1919, residents demanded a remedy to regulate the snowmelt, draining into the Pacific, and water supply for boomtowns. The water management issues continue today, but 1933 and 1960 saw two major solutions. The Central Valley Project under the Bureau of Reclamation sought to provide irrigation and hydroelectric power as well as municipal and industrial water to much of the Central Valley. The California State Water Project continued these efforts 30 years later. A key element of the efforts is Shasta Dam, which created Shasta Lake, California's biggest man-made body of water. The lake, a series of aqueducts, and over a dozen other dams allowed various levels of government to store and distribute 46 square miles of water. Since 1866, engineers dreamed of throwing up a dam to tame the river. The Bureau of Reclamation hired Pacific contractors and funded the dam entirely with federal dollars. The public and professional fervor overruled concerns about flooding tribal lands and expensively rerouting Southern Pacific and Western Union wires. Hoover Dam engineer Frank Crow supervised construction of the Shasta Dam between 1937 and 1945. Upon completion, it was the second tallest dam in the U.S. and was considered one of the greatest engineering feats of the era. Contemporary engineers pushed for its massive power generation in order to provide factories during the second. The management and evaluation of the water came under review in the 50s, booming post war populations to create groundwater basins. To manage, to manage and mitigate state, state and federal, and federal agencies, agencies formerly at the California State, state Water Project, one of the largest, of the largest publicly built, built and operated water power conveyance systems in the world. It collects, it collects waters, waters from North, North California, California rivers, rivers for redistribution in arid lands downstream. 70% goes to urban areas for municipal and industrial supply, while the rest goes towards Central Valley irrigation. The overall system provides drinking water for millions of people and generated hundreds of gigawatt hours annually. The Shasta Power Plant has five huge generators capable of producing 710 megawatts. Put into operation in 1944, Shasta Power Plant has been producing power for over 60 years. The temperature-controlled device was designed to ensure cold water releases of the river, providing suitable habitat for downstream fish populations. Policy of the day, however, was not environmentally friendly. It was not until 1997 that completion of the underwater project was completed. While there are currently better solutions, the dam provides very inexpensive, easily accessible power and water and thus remains in operation today. In recent years, there has been a debate over whether or not to raise the dam in order to allow for increased water storage and power generation. The National Water Resources Planning Policy, specified in the Water Resources Development Act of 2007, lays out some guidelines for such endeavors. Federal water investments must reflect national priorities, encourage economic development, and protect the environment. Central Valley floodplains and flood-prone areas like Sacramento must be managed wisely to reduce adverse effects and maximize public benefit. Today, engineering firms bid on government contracts are vetted by public office holders. Engineers, however, must contend with other scientists. This year, biologists that worked with federal agencies to enforce the Endangered Species Act concluded that they could not endorse a voter-approved push to raise the dam. Impact on the salmon would be too significant. 
Though as the drought continues, policy may shift. The historical agencies responsible for California's appropriative water rights vastly overcommitted water from the Central Valley watershed streams. In 2008, the State Water Resources Control Board reported that the Central Valley watershed has an average annual runoff of 36 cubic kilometers. The state, the state, however, appropriated 266 additional cubic kilometers of water. This inadequate apportionment by the California government contributes greatly to the state's continual water shortage. Despite deficiencies, the Central Valley Project continues to deliver for agricultural, urban, and wildlife use. The project provides enough water to irrigate about 3 million acres, or one-third of the agricultural land in California, during an average water year of 4.8 billion kilowatt-hours of electricity are provided by the CVP through hydroelectricity to meet the needs of nearly 2 million Californians. The CVP provides water for 20 million Californians, as well as irrigating more than 600,000 acres of land. The project has caused the destruction of Native American burial grounds, as well as nearly eliminating certain fisheries. Nearly every aspect of life is impacted by the efforts to efficiently distribute responsible use and fairly apportion water. The of the Shasta Dam in 1945 was a milestone for the Central Valley and California state water projects. In the following decades, Congress passed 13 measures for the creation of project facilities. The final dam was completed in 1979. The efforts of the government engineers and contractors who constructed these projects have permanently affected California's relationship with its most valuable resource.